all right welcome to day four of uh haskelling the advent of code uh i hope my audio is a bit better i've turned on compression so even when i'm talking this direction it shouldn't sound too bad uh thing is i was testing it always by talking directly into the microphone and not looking in this direction right which is where i'm looking most of the time so hopefully it's better now all right let's uh, look at today's problem but yeah let me know if the audio isn't good enough um because I can monitor my output, but it's very hard for me to monitor the audio because there's so much lag. Because um, I, I don't have like direct feedback into the microphones like I do with the microphone. Like I don't have direct feedback of the entire mix um, like I do with my microphone audio. So I can't really tell how the mix is. But. All right, uh, let's check out today's problem. Day four. Oh, no, it's day three. Day four. Passport processing. Okay. So we forgot our passport. And, uh, okay, so we don't have, okay, so we aren't valid, we don't have valid travel documentation or long line. Okay. Due to some question on network security, you might be able to solve both of these problems at the same time. Are we going to be doing hacking? Is that illegal? The automatic password scanners are slow because they're having trouble detecting which passwords have all required fields. The expected fields are as follows. Burr, ear, ear, hicked, huckle, huckle, pid, sid. Okay. So... Passports are validated in batch files, your puzzle input. Each passport is represented as a sequence of key value pairs separated by spaces or new lines. Passports are separated by blank lines. Here's an example batch file containing four passports. Um, okay. First passport is invalid. All eight fields are present. Second is invalid. It's missing height. The third passport is interesting. The only missing field is SID, so it looks like data from North Pole credentials. Not a passport at all. Surely nobody would mind if you made the system temporarily ignore missing SID fields. Treat this password as valid. Fourth one here. Missing two fields, SID and beer. Missing SID is fine, but missing any other field is not, so this password is invalid. Okay, according to the bubbles, you improved system would report two valid passports. So... In your batch file, how many passports are valid? All right, let's go. Seems like uh, we're going to be doing a lot of string processing today. Let's uh, make it your day four. CD day four. And then we open day four. We say new file. Day four.hs. But let's start off with saying new file here and let's have our test input. Let me put that. Okay, so here's our test input. Now we will say module main where get input string IO. Let's just return a list of passports, right? Uh, that's kind of cool. Get input. So this is going to be, so we're going to take, uh, oh, this should be file path, right? So we do, we, uh, read file. So, uh, lines, L and S is going to be the read file of the file path. And let's see here, passports. How are we gonna represent passports? So I assume that later we will have to look at the values in problem two. That's like, it doesn't make sense for to have so many stuff if if it doesn't have all the values. So let's let's make this a map for data dot map. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, so a passport is going to be a map of strings to strings. This is going to be a list of passports. Okay. So to passport. So this is going to take a list of strings, the fields of the passport. And we are going to return the passport. So first of all, uh, to passport equals undefined. We haven't defined this yet. So let's just say you print LNS. Let's just print it to start with. The issue now is uh okay yeah we have to return the list of passports so let's say here main is io main equals do get input test input uh Let's run this. GC day four dot hs o day four, and we run it. Day four. What happens? Um, okay, compiles links. No typers. We could only tell that from GC ID. Okay, we got all the lines, so let us... So, passports are separated by blank lines. So, we will go here, we will map lines over this. Let's see here. So, now we have the lines. But it might be... So, there's going to be blank lines. So, uh, let's... Now we're going to want, we want a function to kind of split it at all the places where it has split, split. Uh, okay, we want a function that takes an A and uh, let's, I think, I think it's A bool and list of A's and we want a list of list of A's. Split when? Oh, this is from another. Okay, let's just let's just write the function, right? Uh, split when takes an EQ, takes a A to bool, and then a and then a list of A's and returns a list list of A's. Split when. Okay, so how do we do this? Um, F and then we have, okay, so if we have an empty list, we will return empty list, right? And then it doesn't matter what F is. Split when F uh, X X is, let's say with A, let's say with A, oops. A A's. And then case FA. This, so if, if we have a match on the front, we want it to, we want to drop those, right? Hmm. I think it's easier to just do split at. That's in the prelude, right? Or uh, let me see. What is the function called? Isn't it like span? I mean, this is kind of like span, but there's. I think it's drop when or something like that, right? Drop while. Uh, yeah, so take while not okay, so span uh, 
okay group mm -hmm. cuz i think there should be a there should be a list here somewhere there's a function that just does this um Okay, let's just let's just let's just make it easier. Let's just say split when x is this is just gonna be where uh, break f this is gonna be con so this is gonna be you know everything that doesn't satisfy the condition and then the thing that satisfies it so um, so it's just gonna be uh, first and then rest equals break on the x's so this will be first that's going to be a list of things concatenate it to split uh okay and this here will actually be you know the first value will be the one that it actually matches and we don't want those so we say split when uh Pond rest. Okay, and let's see. Uh, print passports. Okay, uh, right, let's. Here we. So, print split when equal to the empty list. Uh, LNS. Okay, run it. Alright, so it not access to patterns in first rest okay yeah okay so i think we have to say here yeah we have to say so it, we, we didn't we didn't account for the end right break cond uh access of uh so first comma rest this is gonna be first. So this is, is gonna be first and rest. So if we break it and we get something with the end, we're gonna return that. Um, but if we if we do get the empty list here, um, so first and then and we don't care. We get the empty list here. So it will always be the empty list, right? Yeah. But we don't care about that. So this is going to be first comma empty list. Oh no. That was an infinite loop. Uh, split when con rest, right? And then. Okay, so I think we should define this whole thing like this let's just say case break con x's of uh yeah let's just do the entire thing here case okay so we're just doing this here case break con of uh right so if we have first and then the rest then we will return first concatenated to split when con the rest otherwise we just return for first just return the list containing first okay see and now we have this here so we get all the passwords. Works great. Okay. Um, and then we're going to join them. So first let's map, let's map words over them, right? Let a P entries equals, so we split these. And then a uh, comp equals that is so let's map 
uh, words over uh, over p come up so we map we map map words over p entries print comp p's let's see what that does okay see and now we have all the words like this and then okay and then we will we will so we will join or we will concat the lists after we map words over them so what happens now okay now we have this is an entire passport okay this was so this is an entire passport with all the words and then this is an entire passport okay good okay so now we've uh now we've created the passports okay so so now we have all the guys passports okay and now we will say uh this is the comp p's so over that so over those uh we will actually map Uh, map break equal equal so we want to break it at the at the at the these right so we get the kind of word key key value pairs right so we map it at break uh, and then we get this we get these key value pairs um and now yeah okay so now we have the key value pairs let's just print the head here what is that the head is going to be a list of key value pairs for one uh, passport but with the colon in front right okay so um Then we will just say, so who go, I think it's just from list, right? I think, and then like P's equals map, map dot from list over the comp P's. So here we will print PS. So here we just turn them into maps um and they will be maps and then uh, uh, so how do we map over the values in a map let's see uh, we can probably use data strict right but we don't we don't care uh adjust up to the value okay so Size, combine, difference, intersection, disjoint, compose. Yeah, okay, we just want to map over the map. So let's map dot map. Uh, okay, no, now we have a list of maps. Oh my god. Okay, so we will map dot map. Uh, we want to drop the first element. Uh, drop one. Okay, and you see now? Uh, and then this will be print PS. And now we don't have the the annoying colon there. So, so we'll just return PS. Alright, so we generated the passports. And now we are supposed to check if they are valid, right? So, when are they valid? Well, all eight fields are present. Um, 
So then we just check the we just check the size of the key set, right? Uh, how do we map over the keys? How do we just get the keys of a map? map keys, okay? Okay, so here we get the passport. So let's say print map keys over the passports to be mapped on keys. Okay, and then uh, so is valid is valid one. I'm gonna I'm just gonna call it. It's gonna be we're gonna apply it again later. So is valid passport to bool. So is valid one ps equals case length ps of. So if it is eight, then all eight attributes are present, right? If it is seven and a ps has the Uh, let me just say member uh, We just say uh, CID Member It's gonna be map.member PS Okay, this will be just you know check if Sid is a, is a key if it is a key uh, So this is gonna be not right so if Sid is not present, that's okay. Otherwise, seven is gonna be, if Sid is there and there's something else missing, it's gonna be wrong. Um, so we don't even, we don't even have to check, right? Uh, but this is, I know, it's not an optimization, right? So if it's anything else, it's false. Okay, uh, so let's say map is valid i'm just writing it like this because i'm i'm pretty sure in part two it's going to be um it's going to be we're going to have to check the values okay so let's see what is the length of filter of filter id all right that's two uh and for the first one we were supposed to say two. Let's get the input. And let's say, let's add a new file. Oh no, I said new folder. New file, input. And uh, let's see what happens. Haskell syntax is kind of funny. Come say that to my face. Uh, yeah, I mean, you get used to it, right? And it's like, it's whatever you get, it's whatever you're used to, which is not funny. But this is, I don't know, I like it. Like, once you realize what's going on, it's quite nice. So let's say, this is just gonna be, Let's just let's just copy paste here. We're not we're not gonna be maintaining this code. Okay, and here we're gonna get the input, and then we're gonna print is valid of passports. Valid one of the passports. 226 it says. Um we're even printing it here. We don't need that. Let's see. 226. You think it's correct? I think it is. It's correct. Yeah, JavaScript and Python, they're very imperative, right? But here, like, the focus is on the expressions and not the statements. 
But uh, so it's only in do notations actually that we have statements. Otherwise, these are all just expressions. That's why the syntax becomes a bit funny. Um, but it makes it so that you can very easily evaluate everything actually, which is just, which is pretty good. Okay, let me see. Um, by the way, do you guys see the chat messages on stream? Because I, I keep missing them. I hope you do. Um, all right, let's see here. 226, let's check if that's the right answer. Otherwise, we have to see. All right. We got the first one. Now, let's see if all our parsing work turned was the right work. Otherwise, I mean, because I assume we're going to look into the values of the passport. All right. So we fixed the system. Uh, airport security is talking about password with invalid data again. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. So birth year, four digits. Issue year, four digits. And at most, 2020. Uh, expiration year, height, hair color, eye color, passport ID. Uh, Sid is ignored, okay? All right, so now we're gonna write some validation code. Let's see. Uh, okay, where all required fields are both present and valid. Here are some example values. Here are some valid press ports. Okay, so we still use the same input. So, okay, so let's check it out. So there's only 226 valid passports. So let's just simplify it and say valid. So let valid passports equal uh, filter is valid one passports. Because they have to have all the fields. Um, but Sid is ignored, so we can we can actually do this, and we can, then we can just say length valid passports. Yeah, run it. How fast is this actually? Okay, so it's how fast is just the four milliseconds. I mean, and we're parsing stuff and putting it into a map. That is quick as lightning. I mean, it's not nanoseconds. It's not like uh, rust stuff where you can like, I mean, but you know, it's pretty good. And you can see here that like three of those seconds were spent by the system. Okay, so it's about 10 milliseconds. That's not bad. Um. And that's even like with the test. Okay, so let's uh, so let's uh, check. Let's write here. Let's let's just copy paste this. Right. I have a bunch of things. Uh, is valid fields passport to boom. Oh no. Okay, so we're going to have all of these. So beer is supposed to be four digits. Here's valid fields. Okay. Uh, so here we're gonna, we're gonna, let's just turn this into, uh, let's, tr let's do it. Okay, so it's valid fields. Okay. Um, So let's say here, uh, data valid passport, uh, just so we can make use of some stuff. Valid, valid passport equals, so we're gonna make a data constructor, EP. So it's gonna have a beer. It's gonna be a, a string, okay? Ear, 
is going to be string. So these are all going to be strings, right? But we just want to be able to refer to them easily in the validation checker. So, okay. Because like we, we only have strings and we want to, we don't want to assume what they are, right? ECL. Because like, you know, one of the issues we might run into is that it, is, it just doesn't parse, right? So, okay, ECL, string, pid, string, and we don't actually need, so these are all valid passports. Uh, so this one will take a valid. So two valid passport. It takes a map of string to strings and returns a valid passport. Two valid passport map equals. So how do we look up in maps? Okay, we can just have, yeah, okay, it's just bang. And we know that all the elements will be there. So we will say, this is a VP. Uh, beer equals map, so let's just write here, M. Beer is map, beer. Ear equals M, ear. And then we say ear, so this will be E. Uh, eight will be Hagite. This will be A C L. Will be E C L, and this is PID. Okay, C. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, this will be. Map dot bang. Okay. Now. Let's see here, we will be deriving show. And then let valid passports is map to valid passport of the filter. So what is it complaining? To valid passport, yeah, okay. Okay, now you see, now it, the, the speed is a lot slower, right? Because now we have to like look up in a map. Um, can we fix that? Import data.map.strict. Import quality data.map.strict. So if we assume we will read it. Okay, I mean, it's still a little very slow. How about we... Um... Hmm. I think, I mean, I think what happens here is that essentially it never kind of checks the values or anything once we're generating the passport. So, so that's the thing that Haskell does a lot is that, you know, it like, it just doesn't put the values in there. It doesn't evaluate that statement if it doesn't need to, right? So, but now we're actually evaluating the thing and then we need it, right? So it is, it's quite good at what it does. Like at, at like these crazy behind the scenes optimizations that we're, we're, yeah, it's just magic, but you know, this is not too bad actually. So this is with with compilation. Let me see. Oh, so it's still super fast. I'm sorry. We're just compiling more code. That's all. Two valid passport. Okay, so let me see here. Is valid passport. So this one will take a valid passport, and it will say. Now let's call this 
has valid fields. This will go to a bool. Has valid fields. And then here we can take a VP and we can do this dot dot thing. And that will complain because uh, we haven't enabled the extension for that. So it's record wildcards. Lang language. Let's actually run this and then time this only. This is good. Okay, so now we have all of these fields in scope. Well, let's check it out. Has valid fields. Okay. Where? Okay, so now we're just gonna we're just gonna do a a kind of a case break. Mm. So we can do this, I think, by saying maybe valid passport. So let's say say here. So let's say here. So we, we're going to use the do syntax, and then we'll just kind of escape early if one of them is wrong. So do um, so we're going to go guard. Uh, I think we need to import guard from uh, control.monad, right? Yeah. So we will guard against a Va valid beer. Uh, so here we will say okay. Let's just say this. All right. So it's gonna be valid beer. Uh, and valid beer is birth is your year. So that is. So we have beer in scope. So we'll say if. So it has to be a four digits length beer equals equals four and so we will read add int so now we read uh, we need we need type applications and like last time we didn't need it but now we it doesn't know that it should be an int uh if length beer equals four so then i equals read so we will we will use this value here read at int beer and then in uh we will say beer larger than let's just say i larger than or equal to 1920 and i less than or equal to 2002 Okay, uh, so and this is also a case of lazy evaluation, right? Here we can actually just say we can just we can just let this be in the computation and we say length beer equals equals four and it will actually never evaluate this thing uh and it will, won't actually evaluate the i there unless it's needed right so we'll never get a parse error which is cool okay uh so so uh valid here Valid here. So we we read the year and then we check if it is four. 
and that it is larger than 2010 and that is less than 2020 okay uh, same here let's uh, replace year with expiration year uh, and let's make sure that we are actually seeing valid EIR also so the length has to be four digits at least 2020 and less than 2030 okay um, height a number followed by either cm or inch okay um, so we will flip it and reverse it flip it reverse it uh, valid height equals case reverse height of okay if it if the reverse ends in m c and then the rest r then we uh we say read at int So okay, we were we were actually I think we should we should read and like do a case on the read because if the if it doesn't parse, that uh, that shouldn't we shouldn't don't want an error in that case. We want a maybe. So we read maybe. Okay, so we say. Um, So here we will just say case read maybe at int this would be beer of but here we actually we do the case split before so we will say here um, we will say length beer equals four and like this. So yeah, and this is a nice thing, right? This case thing is just a it's just a uh, expression, right? So we can actually just do this. Use it as an expression. Um, then we read the maybe here. This is why, and this was. Sorry about this. And we just want it all to be correct. Uh, yeah. Wonder if there's like a probably like a super efficient way to like make all these edits super fast but uh, I don't feel like it um, just I okay and this should be Air, right? Is it not a standard syntax for programming in Haskell? I mean, this is Haskell syntax. There's nothing, nothing wrong here. I think. I hope not. Um, let me see. Uh, let's let's like let's so we let's let's actually. Let's make this a bit nicer. Let's say check range. So it takes an int and an int and a string. So let's say check year. It takes an int and an int and a string. Returns a bool. So check year. So we have the low and the high and the string. So then we will say 
length l equals four and uh, then we do the case maybe read maybe of the string so stir so here we have like stir and stir and then we just check this is larger than or equal to the low and this is less than or equal to the high and then valid bir equals check year what was the what was it for bir it's 1920 and no 2002 right like this so er is this is 2010 2020 right uh, valid uh, eir this is going to be 2020 and 2030 like eir yeah this is too much copy paste right all right uh yeah, I mean, the white space is significant, right? So, so if I do it wrong, uh, so yeah, the question is like, is the white space of indentation significant? And it's like, if I do it wrong, it will complain, right? If I don't have the correct syntax or the uh, white space. And I think this is, uh, this is quite standard, I think. I mean, I don't know, it's, I've been, I've been working on GHC for a bit and this isn't so far away from GHC, so I'm... Yeah, I don't know. Um, we could do this thing here with an F map, but uh, that seems a bit overboard, actually. Yeah, okay, so check here. So if it is 70 meters, and then we say case, read maybe at int of, uh, of R of, so if it's just, uh, just, just a uh, height, then we want it to be 150. They want to be height larger than or equal to 150 and height less than or equal to 193. Uh, otherwise it's just false. Uh, case read maybe int cannot what why is it saying this can't cannot apply type expression type t1 to a visible type argument int but now it doesn't know the type right oh I think it has to be, uh, what? Now it's complaining that, re okay, read maybe isn't defined, yeah, okay. This is in data text.read. Really should be a, imported by default right okay read maybe is now here and then and now it just works why well, it should complain i think this is also a ghc id error it's, it's giving the wrong complaint here all right uh let's actually just copy paste this i don't want to we don't we're just gonna run it once we don't need we don't need to abstract it if it's uh, inches, then it should be 76. Oh, shit. We need to reverse the string back, the uh, numbers. This could have failed us. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so, and if it ends with anything else, it's just false. Okay, so we need a valid height as well. Okay, uh, so for, 
So okay, hair color followed by exactly six characters, zero to nine or A to F. Okay, uh, hair color, let's do that. Uh, let's. Let's copy this in like this. Just so we have it by hand, right? Okay, so valid ACL. So here we have to say, I think we can just say is alphanumeric. Oh, no, so it's supposed to be A to F. Um, we'll go, so we go to data.char. I think we can also just, you know, we can do, let's check it out, GTI, uh, can we do 0 to 9, wow, can we do 2F, uh, okay, so we can just do 0 to 9 plus A to F. I mean, this should optionally, optimally be uh, like a regex, but then the, like Haskell doesn't have a standard regex library, so it's a bit of a pain. So let's just use this. Um, valid HCL. Uh, so case uh, HCL of, so if it, so it starts with something here. Uh, so, okay, first, first of all, we want a length ACL equal to seven. Can I do this? What's it complaining about? Parse error and input valid ACL. Oh yeah, I think like this. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, okay, let's not do it this way. Let's just say here case ACL of Okay, so let's say if Let's say length ACL equals seven and the case ACL of so it has to start with a, a hashtag or a bang or and then all of these have to be set. Okay, so let's say here, uh, uh, where CL chars equals. Now let's use a set. So we, we use a set and then we do, um, let's, let's do this on the top field here. Valid ACL chars should be set dot from list. From list, a, so it's gonna be zero to nine uh, plus a, to F valid HCL chars equal they are this is a set of characters so okay so if it starts then we say I think there's a function called and and it just checks that all of them are true so we say map uh, we will map the set.member. Uh, so how does, what is set.member? 
import data dot set set dot member oh oh no it's type member okay so it takes in an a and it takes a set so this would be valid acl chars what would you call them valid acl chars let's call them something else Valid HCL chars, uh, let's see. Set member valid HCL chars uh, to R, and then we say and. Okay, this should work. Uh, so we check that the first one is hashtag followed by exactly six characters zero to nine or a to f so and then we just check that all of the characters are valid right okay uh, if this is wrong this is gonna be this is gonna be so painful to debug I hope the demo input has like a good coverage because uh, Okay, so valid HCL, okay. Let's just write the other ones here. Okay, we don't check valid SID because it is ignored so let's just write here so we have valid height and we have valid HCL and valid ECL and valid PID so let's just add the list together this will all be turned into the same valid HCL valid ECL and valid PID. So that's seven fields. That should be exactly the right ones. Uh, height, valid eye color, exactly one of am, blue, burn, gray, gurn, sun. Okay. Uh, Let's just write that, right? Let's just let's do this in a set. This is going to be a set dot member of. Uh, What did they say? Ham, blue, burn, gray, hazel, of. And then we just check here if valid ECL is a member of valid ECL vals. Easy enough. Passport ID is a nine digit number including leading zeros. So let me just say PID. Uh, the length of PID equals nine. 
and so here we can use the data dot chart is uh, we can look at data dot char which has a bunch of these is control is space is alpha is alpha num is print is digit uh, I mean we could do it with the set membership thing but this is also just so it should be it should be nine and let's see there's also the all function I think yeah so this takes in a checks that whether that all are something so it's basically an and over first you map and then you do and so then we could just say here that all should be a set member of LHRs. And here we can say that all is digit. Did. Okay. Uh, then let's check it out. Length valid passports. Length filter has valid fields passports. Okay, it says 160 of them are valid. Um, how many of them? How many of them are? Um, right, so let's filter map is valid. Let's make the Make the test passport also. And then how many are length has valid fields? Uh, valid test passports. Okay, so it says the two should be valid. Oh, I'm being rated. It's cool. Okay, so two should be valid. Let us see what they said. So here are some valid passports, okay. Invalid passports. Let's see. Um, Uh, okay, let's simplify the thing here. So, uh, let's see. Uh, let's get the passports. So let's dump these into endpoints, right? Valid pass is. Uh, and these are going to be invalid. These are going to be valid. Okay, uh, let's check it out. Wow, there's so much happening in the chat. The most uh, active chat I've ever seen. And none of them are asking questions about Haskell. Anyway, yeah, it is a nice keyboard. I got it like two weeks ago. Um, it came in like Danish colors, but then I made it Icelandic because that's where it's at. Uh, Haskell is a, a programming language. Uh, that's a functional, it's a lazy functional programming language, uh, which are, which is, it's my favorite language. I've uh, I worked on the compiler a bit, so I I know like the a bit of the ins and outs. Um, and it's a bit different from like the usual imperative languages. In that you know everything is expressions, so it's a uh, it's it's fun. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me 
Let me abstract this away here. Um, uh, all valid. So that's going to take a, a file path and that's going to return me a list of booleans. Uh, all valid. So, and then I'm going to say just like this here. And then we're going to write IO and uh, we're going to do, we're not even going to re rename it, right? We're just going to do this and then we're gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna print yeah okay we're just gonna print uh we're going to print and we're just gonna return dollar map okay uh, and these uh, are gonna be applied to imp the name of the file and uh, let's see. Okay, now it's complaining here that this is wrong. Oh yeah, I, I screwed it up. Okay, let's uh, let's look at the. Let's not look at the input anymore. Let's look at uh, all valid of test input. Uh, let's uh, print into print. Uh, we're going to check the, the, the invalid pass and we're going to check the valid pass. Compile. So, oh, it, oh yeah, it filters, it filters out everyone. Okay. So, so it says that all of the valid ones are, huh? Is it saying that? Is it is it like the exact opposite? Did I okay the, okay sorry I re I named the files wrong so this is these are supposed to be the invalid passwords. Let's copy this and let's see. These are supposed to be the invalid ones. Yeah, exactly. And I so I just I just made the files wrong. Oops. Be careful, kids, when you're naming your files. Okay, valid, invalid. All right, we get four false invalids. We get four correct. And let's then let's just run it. Let's just see if it works. Um, so we get the input. We print the length of valid passports, and then we print the length of invalid passports and it says 160 so let's just check the oracle 160 all right we got the right answer woo, woo. uh yeah okay we spent like so much time on on all of this stuff we could have just run it immediately but um yeah, this is just a very kind of very uh, crude sort of way to do it. You know, I'm just parsing the strings and we're just looking at everything directly. You know, there's no trick involved here. Okay, I mean, we choose the right data structures. We choose sets and then we choose maps. But I don't know, like are people... Because, you know, I think so, so some years... Um, the the advent of code like you you have to find the trick otherwise it's going to be super hard and super long but here we just kind of you know we we the first one was just very simple i just just check if it had eight fields okay we could have gone through it and checked if it had exactly the fields but we just we didn't even care right um then we just like kind of mapped it to a password and like we wouldn't ha we didn't have to do this actually it was just so that we we could use the values directly here. Um, and like, you know, we didn't even have to do that. So yeah, we could have just parsed it uh, on the fly, but like we, we want it at least uh, something. And it would be nice, you know, if we had a 
deriving function that took map a string to strings and a, a record that has only string fields and could kind of pun on it. Um, we could probably have done this with like ASIN or something like that. Because like this would have been a, a, a JSON data structure. Um, and then, you know, we just made these sets here. We kind of, we made them outside. I think GHC would have lifted these out of the has valid fields function. I think because I have written code where I am like going into expressions and it's, it's very good at lifting things. And what does lifting mean? Well, it would essentially just, you know, take this definition that doesn't depend on any argument and it would lift it all the way here to the top level. So it doesn't need to be evaluated. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it only needs to be evaluated every now and then. Okay, and yeah, I mean, this this is just copy paste. We could have we could have said uh, could have said something else, right? We could have said um, let's just let's make it a bit nicer, right? We have we have some time. Uh, check r equals what is? Oh no. Uh, check r is uh, we could have done something like this, right? Just h check uh, all l h r and then and then here we would have said uh, so right uh. This will be low and high, and then we would have said height is larger than the low, and the height is larger than the high. And then we would have said here, um, wait, what is it? Let's not reverse it. Check uh, 5976R. And then what is this? Check 150, 193 R. So we made that nicer. Uh, so this just let's copy paste. Um, yeah. Here also, you know. Yeah, I, I, you know, all of these are kind of. They just do what they're supposed to do. Um, I mean, yeah, this this could have been nicer. I mean, we could have written this all valid right away, but um, you know, we were just doing it as we went along, right? We didn't actually need anything more here. Uh, oh no, my playlist ended for some reason. Yeah, this is uh, Harris Heller, the Lo-Fi Christmas playlist. It's quite nice to have underground. I like the Lo-Fi music when I'm programming. It's just it's not too distracting and. Uh, it's, yeah, it's nice. It's nice and cozy. Okay, yeah, so that's it for today. Let's just make sure that it still works. Yeah, still works. Uh, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow with day five. So check, uh, check it out. Um, so it's gonna be the same time tomorrow, but let's say I started at like six o'clock European time. So I'll start, start around then. And uh, as we see, like I've usually been taking like 40 minutes to do these things. This time it was, it's been an hour, 15 minutes, hour, 20 minutes. So uh, these are getting harder and harder, but you know, the harder it gets, the, the more fun they get. Um, so check it out tomorrow in case you're interested. And, uh, I have a playlist on YouTube where I've uploaded like the episodes so far and uh, I make sure that the um, I, I fix the audio essentially in the, in the videos. I've had some trouble with the audio, but I think I think it sounds OK now. I, I put in a bunch of compression and the, the issue was like if I was talking like this and I was talking like this, the difference in audio would be way too much. But uh, yeah, all right, so tune in tomorrow for more Haskell 
programming and uh, yeah you want to follow and uh, if you're watching this on youtube you know like and subscribe that's what <laughs> that's what i'm supposed to say right mm, let me check let me do one more thing no okay i wanted to like map this map these things over but i i don't think this gets much shorter we could could exchange this like with an f map um but uh but you know and then like f map this check over read maybe because we're also doing that here but yeah i think this is quite good all right see you all tomorrow <laughs>